I know it's lost that control of right? um, I hear on social media it's National Traeger Day. Well, you know what I have to say to Baton here on Solar Smoke. We do not like Traegers. We like GMG and Primos. So, in honour of National Traeger Day, it's National Anti Traeger Day here. So, guys, we've got a bit of a treat for you. We've got a whole chicken here. We're going to be doing a smoked chicken. We're going to be doing pork belly burnt ends. And I've got two chunky Mexican sausages to smoke for you. Now, I'm just going to maybe, you know, show some of the beginners what to do. But I always find that spatchcocking a chicken on a smoker gives the best results. And for that, basically, you get your whole chicken here, as you can see. What you want to do is turn it this side. Here's, here's the backbone. You take yourself a good pair of kitchen shears. Uh, you can buy these online, the poultry shears. And what we're going to do is if you want to come in, we can quite clearly see a line where the backbone lies. You can see that. We're going to follow either side of that and remove the entire spine. So I'm going to go in. Now guys, you have to put a bit of force on and you'll hear the bones break. Like so. Got my trusted cameraman Josh here with me today. Helping us out at Solar Smoke. I've got this chicken from a butcher's, so it's nicer quality when you see the market stuff. And I truly, truly believe, you know, some, some stuff I will admit that you can buy from a supermarket is pretty good. Like, you know, Morrison's for you guys are selling good racks of ribs at the moment. But when it comes to chicken, I always believe in either buying from Marks and Spencers or from your local farm shop or butchers. It makes a hell of a difference with um, with chicken. So now see guys, you can see I've removed the, the spine. And what you wanna do is just tidy that up. Let's get it out completely. Now you can see I can open it up kind of like that. Here's a nasty bit of uh, just skin, fatty chicken skin. We're gonna get rid of that because that's no good on the smoker. Get rid of that excess skin because it's just gonna frazzle up. No good for anybody. Just like so. Now here's the trick. Take a sharp knife. You'll find the crease here, the natural crease, where the wishbone normally is. Lay your knife across. Firm hit with the hand. You'll hear it go through. And then you can crack the chicken apart. Perfectly laid out chicken now. And another part here, just where the neck skin is. Get rid of that. We don't want any flaps of uh, chicken skin going. All that's going to do, as I say, is, is just frazzle up on the smoker. No good to any of us. Um, so, yeah, that's basically how you spatchcock a chicken. Nice and simple, nice and laid out. Got a nice platform here to really get some of those herbs and spices in. Whatever we'll be using, it's going to penetrate here because we've exposed flesh. Um, and we'll bring you back in just a moment when uh, I'm going to show you another trick for uh, injecting with butter, so it bakes in its own butter, um, and also how to get extra seasoning down the backside. Catch you in a second. Hello guys, welcome back. So, what I've done here in this little ramekin is I've melted some good quality butter. Today I'm using Kerrygold. So you want to get yourself a decent butter, salted as well. So Kerrygold, President, the French one, and I've also mixed in some of the uh, rub that we're going to be using today, which is Tubby Tom's from Gloucestershire, England. Space dust, you know I like this one, guys. So I've mixed that in here with butter. And what we're going to do is take a, a food injector and we're going to be injecting the breast and the thighs and the legs. Whilst it's still raw, because when it goes into the smoke and starts to heat up, what's that going to do? It's going to baste all your meat all through this chicken. You're going to be left with no dryness, intensified flavour. And guys, I tried it the first time when I experimented doing it this way and it was just phenomenal. So I'll just show you the first one. So we're going to go in. Oops. It's always a bit tricky getting this out. 
Here we go. Look at that golden goodness. Now, straight into the breast. We're going to pump that in. And you'll see the chicken start to plump up. Distribute it out. And what you want to do is start working around the methodical grid section, uh, equally with the thighs and the legs. Um, and once that's done, I'll bring you back. So guys, you can probably just see from looking at the chicken, we've got all that butter in, as I said. So the other trick now left to do is, if you put your chicken up like here, so here's the, two, here's the top of the chicken with two breasts. If you can get your finger down there and create a pocket behind the breast and the skin, because don't forget the skin is a uh, barrier, and won't let uh, any of our good herbs and rubs penetrate. You can create a pocket if you want to come in. And all we're going to do is dump rub. Dump rub, dump seasoning down there as much as you can because it's going to be straight onto the actual flesh of a chicken. Done that side there, shake it down. Same with this side. Got a pocket here, can you see? And all we're going to do is dump rub. Dump a load of that down there because the breasts can take it. Happy days. And now all that's left to do guys is just for a bit of a height so that it doesn't even spread. We're going to get this chicken completely seasoned up. The melted butter that's still all dripping all over this chicken is acting as an adhesive. And good generous coat, especially on the spatchcock side where it's all exposed meat and flesh. Flip it over, get the other side done. Uh, and this is going to be an absolute joy. So, this looks beautiful, doesn't it? Good quality chicken, seasoned properly. As I say, from a height, so you get sort of like an even spread, not caking up in one particular part. Use your hand if you have to to guide it. Just like so. And what we're going to do next, guys, is bring you back when we're doing the air. Uh, Pork belly, and uh, yeah, guys, catch you in a second. And again, guys, back at the chopping board. So, like I told you, it's gonna be a bit of a bonanza today doing chicken and pork. So, what we've got here is three nice, chunky strips of pork belly that I got from a local butcher. Uh, you can probably get a cheap cut from your supermarket, but again, we're going for quality. If you want to come in, Josh, and just see the quality of the pork here. Really nice. Good, sharp knife. Let's take each strip and we're going to cut it into say an inch, just over an inch of cubes. All the fat on still because that's going to render down. There we go. One cube of pork. We're going to do the same for all three strips and then we'll bring you back in a second with what we're going to do next. Welcome back guys. So what I ended up doing was actually cutting the fat cap off, the actual skin layer because we're not looking to get crispy here. We're looking for all broken down, rendered, juicy pork bites. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. So you can still see I've got perfect cubes in here. And you might be wondering what the colour is now. So, American yellow mustard. You can buy it for Frenchies if you want to, but any old store uh, bought yellow mustard will, will do. All it does is act as a binder. You will not taste this at the end at all, I promise you that. So if there's any of you mustard haters out there, don't worry, it's just a binder. Now, I'm using a solar smoke favourite. Goes well with pork. Top tubby toms again, cherry bomb. Love the colour, love the flavour. And again, all we're gonna do, is from a height for even sort of distribution, is get every side of these pork nuggets covered in rub. Look at the colour. Magical. All I'm going to do is get it moving. Get my knife, turn it all around. Doesn't matter, you're not going to affect it. You can take it. All we're doing, churning it around. I want every side covered so that it builds up a bark on the smoker. Now, guys, after this, the next step's going to be lighten up the smoker. Now, I'm going to actually take you through lighting up a Camado smoker. Now, I use Primo um, Camado smokers. Uh, and the reason being is shape. Now, if you've never heard of a Primo before, they're handmade in the USA. They are distinctly different from your usual Big Green Egg or Camado Joe. 
They are oval in shape. And the reason I love it is precisely because of what we're doing today. We're doing multiple things on the smoker. Now, on a big green egg or a Kamado or whatever, Joe, whatever you're using, you're not going to fit all this on. But we are on a Primo, purely because of that extra surface, grill surface area that the oval shape provides. And that is why I love them. They are also extremely efficient. Extremely. You'll see that when you see the thickness of the uh, ceramic out there. Uh, check out my previous review of my first cook on a Primo. But I'll show you how to light one, how to regulate one. Because uh, we're going to do this about 2.20. We're in no rush. It's only 6 p.m. Mrs. is not back till 8 p.m. So what could you do? You've got two hours to impress her. So we'll do it nice and slow. A beer in hand. I think I need the cheers, Josh. Go on, man. <clears throat> cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to smoke meat. We're using hickory chunk wood today. But I'll, say, I'll show you how I've positioned it all and the reasons why. Um, I've got my two Mexican sausages in here, which you'll see going on the grill. There's no prep in that. Guys, we'll use a smoking sausage, just bang it on. That's it. Now the idea with these is what we're going to do is we're going to smoke them for about an hour, naked, just in this pan. You can put pans onto the grill, but no problem. Then what we're going to do is we're going to stick some Bullet Bourbon Frontier Whiskey into the pan. Not a lot. Just two or three shots worth. Cover it with foil. It'll braise in the bourbon whiskey. Then we'll expose it. Take the nuggets off again. Expose them to a little bit more smoking heat. And then I've got a couple of nice uh, sauces that I'm going to show you that we're going to paint on with our silicone brush. So they glaze up and tack up. And what we should have is the equivalent of a brisket burnt ends. Perfectly rendered fat, juicy, melting the mouth pork nuggets again this one guys if you've not seen it i'm not in any way shape or form endorsed by uh tubby toms but he's local from the uk small but independent business support him if you can um check out primo grills check out gmg because it is anti trader day <laughs> guys i'll see you back out of the grill guys we're back here at the primo now i'm just going to talk a bit more get you can see, look, look at the surface area you're going to get here. Because it's the oval shape. Bags of room here, guys, bags of room. Now, some, for some of the guys who don't know what they're doing with these, it took me a little bit of a while trying there, but I can show you what I know. So, if you want to come in, I've put a good bed of decent lumber charcoal. Now, this is supplied by Primo themselves, but, you know, any sort of premium lumber charcoal, look at the size of the pieces we've got. This is really premium charcoal here. Contact for guys if you do need some. Um, I'm going to put all the links in the description underneath. You can speak to Andy, who's the sales manager over at uh, GMG and Primo at any time. He's so helpful. Now, the way I've set this up, I've got one single fire lighter in. Purely because I don't want to start an inferno. So I'm happy enough with just that starting. Um, I've strategically put chunks of hickory wood from ProQ. Guys, get these on any reputable barbecue website. And you, that was that cost me five pounds. I think it was the um, barbecue shack at Milton Keynes. That was the best price I found, so I'll put a link for them. Uh, loads of chunks in there. Last you a long time. I strategically put these chunks. So one, the first one will ignite pretty much straight away, near where the fire starter is, so we get the initial smoke. One halfway through, one towards the end. So there's smoke throughout the whole cook. Now, what I'm gonna do, these, by the way, are for the deflector plates. You pop them in, deflector plate stones will sit on top. You'll see me come back when we, uh, when we do come back, sorry. I'll show you how to put them in. And that's gonna do indirect heat, which is exactly what we want. We are gonna light our all natural, by the way, or all, all natural fire lighter. You don't want any sort of chemical ones, because these by nature are quite porous um, ceramic, so all you're gonna end up doing is, uh, I guess maybe infusing a horrible chemical flavor or taste into your actual Kamado. That may be true, that may be not, but in my opinion, look how well seasoned this is now. Guys, you've seen some of my previous videos, this is beautifully seasoned now from wood and smoke. What I wanna show you next is the vents. So if we come down, 
quite handily on these Primos, we've got one, two, three, four, and five for the vent outlet. Just below the one for the air intake, because we're only shooting the 220 Fahrenheit here. We're not looking for a raging inferno by any means. So just below the one I've found so far. I'm gonna leave this open for a while so enough oxygen can get in there to do the initial ignition. But when it comes to the daisy wheel, let's pull this down slightly, daisy wheel up top. Again, Primo have included one, two, three, four, and five. Now, you'll want it, after this has got the initial couple of chunks ignited, I bring this down to around about one. Around about one. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it open, get some oxygen to this fire. Once I can see the first couple of chunks, uh, of charcoal have ignited. That's when I'll close the lid down, start getting my dialing in on the, on the uh, air intake vent and the daisy wheel on top. Try and settle this at around 220. I've got my Firma Pro here ready, all linked up. Great little shelf air for that to sit on. Once I know the grill grate temperature is sitting at 220 Fahrenheit, roughly 110 degrees C, that's when I'll consider putting food on. But I want to make sure that I've, I'm maintaining a consistent temperature that isn't fluctuating I'd also just like to show you in the sunlight how good that colour is on that pork we're bringing the meat up to room temperature so that it doesn't shrivel up as soon as you put it onto heat we want it to be nice and uh, relaxed so it can take on smoke retain moisture uh, guys I'll see you back probably in about 15-20 minutes this normally takes so I'll see you then Right guys, so we're back, we're at three hour mark. Uh, so the pork um, belly bites are in there, braising uh, the body bourbon whiskey. Um, obviously, Tim poured it over. Look at the chicken, absolutely astronomical. We're gonna flip back the other side now, so you can all can see. That's the cheap, oh you can hear the juices. That's what we're looking at there. Look at the colour that we're getting from the smoke. Astronomical. Let's have a quick look at the uh, pork belly. Oh, look at that. I can smell. Josh, can you smell the whiskey? It smells really nice. That's what we're looking at there. Do you see how they're braising there now? Braising in their own juices. For that whiskey. Give them a little mix. That feels, with just tongs, as tender as can be. So guys, I reckon about another 45 minutes. Um, we're looking good. Um, and just as I said, we close that down. We have been sitting around the 200 mark. So we dropped down slightly having that open. But yeah, just with those settings. Um, the smell, I just wish we could pass the smell through to you guys through on YouTube. This is phenomenal. I mean, Josh, have you got any words that you'd like to say about the smell? It smells absolutely incredible. What are you picking up? A smoky, woody, hickory smell. Uh, yeah, I was agree. The hickory was a good, good choice. Yeah. Um, fantastic, subtle, yeah, woody smell. Um, that's all I can say, guys. Um, I am thinking about doing, if you haven't seen this stuff already, reds. Um, I don't rate it for a lot of stuff, however, some of the sauces are pretty good. So the Unholy and the Kansas is very good. You can get it from most supermarkets, it's like £1.50 for a tub this size. But that's what we're going to be glazing the pork belly bites in. Um, deep, rich flavour. Um, fantastic. Uh, while we're here, guys, um, if Josh would like to come back this way, let's have a little look at the, the smoke shack that's been built. This is all built by hand, um, fits both smokers in perfectly, so you can be sure of lots more videos to come, but guys, yeah, once again, Solar Smoke is back here in the house, um, GMG, anti Traeger day please, just had to read the full set, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah, I feel so too. Yes. Right guys, catch it a bit. Right guys, so we have finally reached internal safe uh, food safety temps up for both the chicken and the pork. Um, probed it with my trusty uh, King Bird. 
uh, both the chicken and the pork is of safe eating temp. What I've opted to do is actually do Tubby Tom's burnt peach and bourbon sauce mixed with a little bit of Kansas City. So I changed my mind at the last minute. So we'll come in and have a look, look at that smoked golden colour. These are the results we've got. This is how the pork bits, uh, the pork bites have broken down. And all I'm going to do is ready for some golden magic. I'm ready. Oh yes, inst instantly. How does that look to you? Incredible, pork, amazing. Pork candy. Pork candy. That's all I'm going to do. I've still got a little bit of bourbon sauce in there, so all it's going to do is help the uh, sauce of deer. Wow, guys, look at the colour. Oh, I, could, I could just eat one of these now. All yep. we're going to do is allow this 15 to 20 more minutes just to tack up. Let the glaze really adhere, but look at the results you're getting straight away. I mean, wow. Can we get a close up? My mouth's watering, and I'm here. A little bit of a chicken? Why not? Why not, sir? This is what smoked barbecue chicken is all about. Let's get generous, let's pour some on. Let's get that stuff all over. Oh, yes. Don't worry about your um, stones beneath. Um, thanks to everybody on the bar Barbecue Society Forum, that's the British Barbecue Society Forum on Facebook. If you get some sauce and all that onto your stones below, the uh, heat stones, your diffusibles, swap them over. Flip them upside down, let the heat clear them off. And I can, can confirm that that works every time. Wow. How's that chicken looking to you? Amazing. So that's, that's next level. That's what I'm talking about, sir. Well, what I'm going to do is pour the rest of the sauce in here. We get all the pork bits mixed up and around. Pork candy there, guys. Pork candy. Once I got this mixed up, just give me a second. That bourbon whiskey still in there. And the juices of a pork. Can I get a close up of that, please? Please. We're right in on that, please, Josh. Let's have a look at the chicken. Guys, smoked chicken, smoked pork, burnt belly pieces, A-OK, -okay, on the Primo grill, say no to your Traeger, <laughs> say hello to GMG, wood fire pellet grills, V number one. I'll be back when all this is ready. Right guys, so thanks for watching today. Um, if we want to zoom in a little bit here. We've got our pork belly burnt ends. Look at that, it's really tapped up so well. Chicken has come out amazing. Look at the colour. We've got deep red, rich mahogany colour. Um, I'm super impressed. Look at these pork belly bites. They are tender as hell. I'd just like to hold one up for you guys. Look at that, just with the, with the tongues. That's what we've achieved. Um, this is what you can do on a Primo grill. Um, say hell no to Traeger, say yes to GMG and Primo. Um, fantastic chicken, this is going to be an absolute treat. Um, new videos coming soon and hopefully, hopefully we're going to be doing a whole brisket soon. So hit like, hit the subscribe button, um, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Soul of Smoke. Uh, once again, thanks again.